Coming up next on Win News, Tasmania's Premier resigns after 17 years in Parliament. Talking climate change on the global stage and all the action from the Hobart International. Across Tasmania, this is Win News. Tonight, political shock. Tasmania's Premier announces he's quitting. The decision to stand down comes after 17 years in Parliament. And speculation rife over who'll take on the top job. Good evening, I'm Melissa Russell. Also tonight, we take a look at the new system improving Tasmania's emergency response and the Hobart Hurricanes' horror run continues. Premier Will Hodgman has sent shockwaves through Tasmanian politics by announcing he's quitting immediately. Just halfway through his second term in power, the popular Liberal leader says the time is right for someone new to step up, saying the decision to leave public life is a personal one. The political bombshell no one saw coming. Well, good afternoon. Um... I'm today announcing uh, that I'll be resigning as a member of our state's parliament, uh, the leader of the Liberal Party and as Premier of Tasmania. Alex Johnston, Win News. And as you heard, the Premier's resignation has come as a big shock. We cross now to reporter Sophie Curl and Sophie, speculation is rife about who will take on the top job. That's right, Mel. While no decision has yet been made, it does appear likely our next Premier will be from the state's north. Now, among the frontrunners is, of course, Deputy Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe, who is seen as quite politically similar to Will Hodgman. And what's been the reaction to the news? Well, it really has been one of shock. No one saw this coming. The opposition were fully expecting to go to the next state election up against Mr Hodgman. Now, tributes are already flowing in with uh, Mr Hodgman receiving widespread praise, not only for his work as Premier, but also in industries, including Tasmania's tourism sector. And it seems like the fallout from this news will continue for uh, days to come. Sophie Curl there. And to the day's other news now, when smoke from the devastating bushfires around the country has drifted across Tasmania, prompting warnings from health authorities. Forecasters say the worst could be yet to come. Air quality worsening from around 8 this morning across northern Tasmania. Deemed very poor in a number of areas, including Georgetown, Scottsdale, Sheffield, Campbelltown and Smithton. Holly Corbett, Win News. Tasmanian emergency service leaders have praised a new system they say has improved their response to a number of incidents. Today we were given a look inside the radio room where unsung heroes respond to the calls of those in need. They're the faceless heroes saving lives from behind a desk. It's here in this room where emergency police calls are received. The taste of Tasmania is set to take on a new flavour as an important era for the iconic event comes to an end. The festival director is stepping down and that may not be the only change. The possibility of an entry fee could be back on the table. Three years ago, Brooke Webb was tasked with breathing new life into the taste amid fears it was going stale and the festival director feels she's done just that. Coming up next on Win News, Mona Foma makes its presence felt across Launceston and the talented Tasmanian showing cricket can be for everyone. Foma has well and truly taken over Launceston with unique performances and art installations popping up across the city. Festival goers even given the opportunity to share their deepest thoughts, fears and stories. Those looking to cool off at the gorge today got a little more than they bargained for. A finals berth is inside for the Tasmanians competing at this year's National Cricket Inclusion Championships. The event features more than 250 cricketers who are deaf and hard of hearing, blind or have low vision or are living with an intellectual disability. Spending a week in Geelong taking on some of Australia's most talented cricketers. 
Tassie's hoping to bring home a title in the intellectual disability division. Sport is up next with Samara Gardner and the Hobart Hurricanes are facing an uphill battle to make the BBL final series. They are, Mel. Following a disastrous match against the Perth Scorchers, more on that next. Also coming up, a rising star of Australian tennis progresses to the second round of the Hobart International. First tonight and Lizette Cabrera is through to the second round of the Hobart International following a gutsy win against eighth seed Caroline Garcia and three sets this afternoon. The young star is now the only Australian left in the singles draw following Sam Stoza's swift exit in her opening round clash overnight. In front of a big Hobart crowd, Stoza just couldn't find her groove against Veronica Kudamatova after upstaging world number 18 Angelique Kerber just last week. In difficult conditions, the Aussie was no match for the Russian, losing in straight sets 6-2, 6-2. The Hobart Hurricanes are in grave danger of missing this season's BBL finals following an embarrassing 77-run loss to the Perth Scorchers, chasing 176 to win. The home team was bowled out for just 98. There were early signs it wasn't going to be Hobart's night. Are you a Hurricanes fan? Not really. Not really? And Mel, that's all in sport. Thanks so much, Samara. Chris is up next with our weather details and it was a warmer day in the north than the south today. Thanks, Mel. That's right, it got above 30 in some parts today. We'll take a look at the rest of the week after the break. This report brought to you by your local mighty helpful Mitre 10 hardware store. Welcome back. With plenty of smoke still lingering about the northeast and western parts of the state, a road weather alert has been issued for tonight and tomorrow, so please do take care if you'll be out on the road. Tonight's weather photo is from Gracie. Gracie captured these beautiful violet clouds in this uneasy sky. It's a magnificent shot there, Gracie. Thank you very much. Let's check out some of those details now from today. It was mostly fine with that smoke haze about. In fact, the air quality is likely to deteriorate even further tomorrow. But today was a little windy for the north. Flinders Island saw gusts up to 43 kilometres an hour. Lovely in Launceston. The mercury had, had reached the mid-20s by about midday and the mercury slipped back to 10 degrees overnight in Oatlands, eventually seeing 24. Now on the charts, a trough over the state is expected to linger into the evening and tomorrow a weak low will develop in the trough before both systems move eastward during the day as a weakening cold front approaches from the west. Now onto the waters in the north, seas will be between 1 and 2 metres. In the east, we've got winds getting up to about 20 knots. For the south, a swell up to 2.5 metres. And in the west, the swell getting up to 4 metres. Now a strong wind warning is in place for Storm Bay, the far northwest coast, lower east coast and south east coast tomorrow. So please do take care. Having a look at that forecast for you now, another hot day for inland areas about the east and south. There's a chance of some showers and storms about the south as well, most likely after midday for Smithton. Heading for a top of 23 degrees over in Swansea, 16 to 27 for Queenstown, 28 degrees and for Huonville, 33 will be the top. Now interstate tomorrow, partly cloudy in Sydney, showers for Melbourne. Looking at the days ahead for back home for Bernie, showers developing around midweek, easing off for, for Friday though. For Launceston, a bit lighter rainfall on the side of things there for Sunday. The showers look to be heaviest next week. And for Hobart, light showers for midweek, also expecting some decent falls early next week. But that's all for weather tonight. Mel, back to you. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for your company tonight. That's how we saw your news. We'll see you again at 6 tomorrow. I'm Melissa Russell. Enjoy your evening. Good night. This has been a Win News presentation. Win News, Regional Australia's number one news source.